Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to look at a comic strip, which is like a comic book, but it's just one or two pages. And this comic strip is called Winker Watson. This is a comic strip that has been going since 1960s, since the 1960s. And it's in a comic magazine called The Dandy, which is very popular and has been very popular for a long time in the UK. So as you can see, you can see the comic strip. I'm going to read it and explain words and we can talk about it together. So the title is Winker Watson and this is the name of this boy here, the boy with black hair. And he is a pupil in a secondary school in the UK. And from the appearance of it, it looks like a private school, a private school, a school that you pay money to. But a very strange thing about the UK is that in the UK, private schools, we actually call public schools, which is very weird. So he goes to a public school, which is actually a private school. <laughs> if you want to talk about a school that is actually for the public, that you don't have to pay for, we call them in the UK state schools, state schools. So here is a little introduction to the comic strip. It says, morning lessons are dull for superstar wangle merchant Winker Watson and his fellow third formers. But when Mr. Creep asks Winker a question, it sparks an idea. So here we've got the word dull, first of all. Dull is another way to say boring. So, oh, the lessons are boring for this pupil, for this boy. And he is a superstar. So he's a fanta he's fantastic. He's a good, uh, he's a very clever boy. He's a superstar. He's a superstar wangle merchant. So we wangle something in the UK. That means that you get a deal. You negotiate something. You want something, you negotiate, you persuade someone to give you that thing. Sometimes you might even manipulate, manipulate someone. So you maybe lie to them, tell them something that's not true in order to get what you want. So wangle can mean persuading someone so you can get something or it can even be manipulating them. So, for example, I could say to someone, hey, can I come to your birthday party? And they say, uh, no, you can't come. I didn't invite you. Why are you asking? And I say, well, okay, how about uh, I bring my friend? My friend is really, really, really cool. You like them? And they say, oh, I don't care about your friend. Well, did you know that my friend is friends with, um, is friends with um, Harry Styles, yeah? He's friends with Harry Styles, so if he comes, he might bring Harry Styles to your party. And they say, what, really? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, you're, you can come, you can come, and your friend can come, and Harry Styles can definitely come. So here I wangled my way into the party or I wangled an invitation for the party. So I persuaded someone and maybe I lied too. But wangling something doesn't have to involve lying. Now, a merchant in this case is just like a funny way to say a guy, okay? So a merchant is usually someone who buys things and sells things on a big scale. Like I buy 1,000 kilograms of fish, and then I sell them to someone else. So I'm a merchant, a fish merchant. But in this case, when he's called a wangle merchant, it really just means he's a guy, a guy that wangles a lot, makes deals, does things, gets out of situations. So he's persuasive, and he's very good at using his brain and his tongue and his mouth and his language to get what he wants in situations. He's a superstar wangle merchant.
is very good at it. He's a superstar. So Winker Watson and his fellow third formers. Third formers is an old way to talk about um, students in year nine. So in secondary school, secondary school in the UK is from uh, about age 11 to age 16. So if you're a third former, you're in the third year of secondary school, which is now called in the UK year nine, year nine. The first year of secondary school in the UK is year seven, which I, I, I always am confused um, in other countries, but I think year seven is the same as grade eight, maybe in America and in some other countries. But anyway, in the UK, year seven, when you're 11 is when you start and he is in year nine, third former. But when Mr. Creep asks Winker a question, it sparks an idea. So it sparks an idea. When you spark, when something sparks, a flame, a little flame comes off something. So if I light a match, okay, when I light the match, sometimes little sparks come off. Um, or you might have used these things called sparklers at, um, at New Year's or another special time of the year. And they're long sticks and you light the end and then they sparkle. Lots of light sparks off the end of the stick and you can draw in the air with them. Uh, so there's a sparkless. So when something sparks an idea, it, he comes up with an idea. An idea suddenly comes to him. And the teacher here is called Mr. Creep, Mr. Creep. And you can see Mr. Creep is wearing a long black gown and a black uh, flat uh, board. Uh, what do you call them? Board. Um, mortarboard. We call it a mortarboard. Mortarboard. That's the kind of hat which usually you wear in the UK when you go to university and then you graduate for university. At the graduation ceremony, everyone wears a gown like that and a mortarboard usually with the university's colours. So maybe they have um, different colours depending on the university. So, and because this is in a public school, which is a private school in the UK, because it's in a public school, they are quite traditional generally, very traditional. And so the teachers might wear something like a gown and maybe a mortar board. Now, this teacher is called Mr. Creep. Now, First of all, creep is quite an unfortunate name because a creep is a negative word in English. If you call a person a creep. To creep as a verb means to walk slowly and quietly. But a person that is a creep is basically strange or weird or makes you feel uncomfortable. So someone who stands at the back of the room and just stares at you. If someone did that, we would probably think that's a bit creepy or that person seems like a creep. So here in this school, this teacher has an unfortunate name and he is called Mr. Creep. So Mr. Creep is writing on the blackboard and he says, Watson, if a train leaves the station at 3.25, takes one hour and 40 minutes to travel to its destination, plus 13 three minute stops along the way, what time does it reach its destination? And Watson says, well, let's see, Mr. Creep, sir. So this is the phrase you can use when you're thinking. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, let's see, Mr. Creep, sir. Let's go to the next image.
Okay. So, Winker Watson says, it depends how good the rail service is, sir. I mean, you say each stop takes three minutes, but what if there are delays? <laughs> so Winker Watson is saying that in the UK and in every country, the train service is not always very good. So his teacher, Mr. Creep, has given him a very precise uh, set of circumstances, a very precise situation. And Winker Watson is saying, well, in reality, the train might have delays, so I can't answer the question. <laughs> and Mr. Creep says, just answer the question, Watson. Just answer the question, Watson. And you can see he's pointing at him and he's got his head really close to Watson with his mouth open. Just answer the quest question, Watson. And Watson says, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Without all the information, I couldn't possibly, I couldn't possibly answer the question without all the information. I need it all. So I could not possibly give you an answer, sir, without knowing if there are delays, without knowing how good the rail service is. And you can see Mr. Creep is really mad. Arrgh, this Watson. Now, in the next picture. Okay, and later in the dormitory, the idea takes shape. So a dormitory is a place where boys or girls sleep in the same room and there are lots of different beds. So this is what you commonly have in a public school where there is boarding in the UK. And boarding means that you can stay there, you can live there, so you don't have to go home. So lots of these uh, children uh, who maybe live quite far away from their parents just board and just live at the school. And the dormitory is this room or this area where there are lots of different beds, so you share a room with other people in the dormitory. And we say dormitory, dormitory. You can say dormitory, dormitory, but normally we'll just shorten the sound and just make it tree on the end, dormitory. So one of the boys says, that's how you get out of a maths question. Did you see Creepy's face? I thought he was going to explode. So that's how you get out of a maths question. To get out of something means you don't have to do it. So the teacher, Mr. Creep, asked uh, Winky, I've forgotten his name, Winker, Winker. Um, so the teacher, Mr. Creep, asked Winker a question and he got out of the question by saying this thing, by making this excuse. So he didn't have to answer the question. Did you see Creepy's face? And here we can see the boys are giving Mr. Creep a nickname. They're calling him Creepy, Mr. Creepy, Creepy's face. This is because, especially because the name has that sense that a creep is a weird person. So they're calling him Creepy, which is the adjective for someone that's a bit weird. And finally, I thought he was going to explode. So when something explodes, it goes <laughs> Okay, so if you think a person is going to explode, it's when they're so angry that they're going to shout and really go crazy, <laughs> like that. Now, in the next part, it rather backfired though. We've got to check all the train times to see if they're on time. Backfired? We'll see. So this first boy says it rather backfired. So if something backfires, it's not successful. So everything that Winker Watson said to Mr. Creep in the end wasn't successful because now they have to do some work. They have to check all the train times to see if they're on time because because Winker Watson said it depends how good the rail service is 
what if there are delays? So what if the train is late? So because he said that, the teacher, Mr. Creep, has told the boys they need to check all the train times and check if these trains are uh, not delayed and if they offer a good service. And the third boy says, backfired, we'll see. So it sounds like he has a plan or they have a plan, uh, maybe a plan of revenge to get back at uh, Mr. Watson for what he did, to get their revenge, to do something um, because he has, uh, he has given them extra homework, extra work, so they're going to do something to get revenge on Mr. Watson, Mr. Creep, Mr. Creep. So let's go. The next day. So, pst is a way to write the sound that we make when you want to get someone's attention, but you don't want to be noticed. Pst, pst, Trotty. And this guy's name is Trotty. But look at Mr. Creep's face. He looks pleased. I think he, he, he knows, he knows that they're talking to each other and he sees that Winker Watson is handing a note to Trotty. Morning break. And Winker Watson says, or thinks to himself, now, if my calculations are correct, Creep will go straight for the note. So he has a plan, he has a plan. He put the note, he gave the note to Trotty and he made it obvious so that Mr. Creep saw and uh, so he's got a plan. I wonder what's on that note. Let's see. Mr. Creep opens the desk where the note was put and he thinks to himself, ha, the note Watson passed to Trot. Stupid boy left it in his desk. So he's got the note and he reads it. I've got a giant bag of sweets stashed in the attic. Meet me there at 10.15. So a giant bag of sweets. Sweets are like uh, candy, candy that you eat. In the UK, we usually call them sweets, but in America, they usually use the word candy. When we talk about sweets in the UK, it's not usually chocolate, but it's the other type of sweets that young kids like to eat that are made with lots and lots of sugar and come in many different colours. So he says, I've got a massive, oh, sorry, I've got a giant bag of sweets stashed in the attic. So if you stash something, you hide it in a place. So you stash it, you stash it in a place so it's hidden and other people can't find it. And the attic in a building is the where there is the roof of the building. So here's the building and here is the roof of the building. The attic is the room in the roof. So sometimes you have um, a, a ladder that you can open out that's in the ceiling and you open it out and then you can climb up into the attic. So it says that there are, are lots of sweets stashed, hidden in the attic. Meet me there at 10.15. Now, Mr. Creep looks pretty happy. He looks pretty happy about the situation. Having found the note, he's like, yes, I'm going to be able to get these boys. I'm going to find them with their sweets, which I don't think they're allowed. I don't think they're allowed. So I think they will be in trouble. They're probably not allowed to be in the attic either. Now, before we move on, I would like to just have a little advertisement, an advertisement just about my channel and how you can support my channel. If you would like to support me, you can join my Patreon page and you can support me from two pounds to five pounds a month. And with that, you get exclusive content. So every month I upload an extra video of content onto my Patreon. And every month I give away a free lesson to one of my subscribers. At the moment, I have very few subscribers so if you subscribe, even for £2, you have a very good chance of winning a free lesson with me. 
So if you want to do that, you just need to click the link in the description, Patreon. If you don't want to subscribe every month, you can also support me with coffee with one single uh, one-time payment. I really appreciate, I really appreciate the support because it helps me to make more videos for you guys because obviously I have other jobs, I have, I teach lots and I don't always have that much time to make videos and to do all of the stuff that I do for English with Archie. So if you would like to support, I really appreciate it. If you can't afford to, then also just like this video or write a comment, subscribe, all of these things help me. So let's move on, thank you. And just to note some of the uh, things that we can see in this picture, we can see Mr. Creep is wearing a suit. He's wearing a suit that's blue with black uh, spots or black dots, black dots or spots. Spots are usually a bit bigger and dots are like really small. So it's a blue suit with black dots. He's wearing a white shirt and a bow tie, a black bow tie and his black gown and mortarboard and also black glasses. So you can see he's very, very, very formally dressed, very formally dressed. This is not the normal kind of clothes that teacher, what teachers wear nowadays to school in the UK. Maybe in some public schools, but usually uh, teachers dress a little bit more relaxed than that. <laughs> okay, oh no, no, no. Okay, so what can you see? So we can see Mr. Creep uh, leaving the room and he's looking at the clock and he says, it's 11 minutes past 10, no time to waste because he's got to be in the attic in four minutes at 10.15. Here he is in the attic. You can see the rafters. These are rafters, rafters, which hold up the roof. And he's walking along, he's creeping along, silently, uh, slowly, and he says, there's the hall of goodies. The hall means something that someone has taken, usually illegally, usually they've stolen something. So if you have a hall of something, it's usually a lot of something that's been stolen. So there's the hall of goodies. Here are the stolen things. And the goodies just mean good things. But we often use this to talk about sweets, but it could be like other food as well. So these are lots of goodies. It could be like uh, crisps or it could be um, sandwiches or cakes or anything that's something like delicious and nice and yummy. So there's the hall of goodies. And here we can see it in a big bag. And you can see all the candy, the candy or the sweets coming out of the bag. But look, what's that on the floor? There's a roller skate on the floor just in front of the bag of goodies. What's going to happen? Whoa! So Mr. Creep flies up into the air because he stood on the roller skate. And what happens next? He flies out of the little window in the attic. Oh no. He's flying out and you can see this, this, uh, this, these two lines behind him to show that movement that's so fast flying out of the attic. And here we can see he's come out of the window and he's landed on a sledge, a sledge or a sled. We can call them either sledge or sled, sledge or sled. So sledge is S-L-E-D-G-E, -E. sled is S-L-E-D with no G-E. But both of these words are used and you can use either. I think I prefer sledge or I use sledge more often. So he flies out of the window and he lands on a sledge and you can see that everything is covered in snow and he says, what? And he's 
face first, face first, not feet first, but face first on the sledge going down the roof of the building. So he flies down the roof on the sledge and lands in lots of snow. And here we've got a shot of him, a shot as in a photo. We've got a photo or an image, a shot of him flying onto the next roof of the building and continuing to slide down on the sledge. And his glasses are all misshapen, not on his face right. And he looks, he looks a little bit stressed. He looks a little bit stressed. He's biting his teeth. Flying down the roof. And we can see fizz. Fizz. I can't really think of the sound. Fizz. Maybe more of an S. Fizz. As he slides down this icy, icy path. And he says, Ay! holding on to the sledge for his life. Holding on for his life means that. He is like really scared that he could die. So he's holding on for his life. And the boys here at the top say, here he comes, lads. So here is uh, Winker Watson saying, here he comes, lads. Super job on that ice slide. So all these boys now we know have prepared this slide here. They have moved away the snow, they've smoothed it down, they've smoothed it, so it's not rough, it's smooth, and so it's really icy now. So, and you can see here all of these footprints of the, that the boys made when they walked up, trying to smooth the ice, smooth the snow and make an ice slide. And here two of the boys are waiting patiently with a smile for the uh, for Mr. Creep to arrive and fly up that plank of wood. This is a plank of wood that he's going to fly up on his sledge. And in the next picture, we can see Shui Yo! And probably. Poof. So here is Mr. Creep that has flown up that wooden plank and has gone flying into the distance over the fence. Here is the fence. He's gone over the fence and uh, Winker Watson is running to watch with a smile. <clears throat> and here he is and he has landed on a train but this is not a passenger train. This is a freight train. A freight train is a train that carries stock, merchandise, um, products and things. So it's not for passengers. In this case, it is coal. So he's landed in a big container full of coal, which is not covered. So he will be completely covered in coal. And coal is what you can use to light a fire. So you can use wood or you can use coal. Coal is like burnt wood that is found under the ground and you can use it as an energy source, which is uh, not a very green energy source. It's not a very environmentally friendly energy source. It's not so good for the environment, but it's, common, it's a common energy source for burning. And in the final picture, Watson says, that was the 1013 express train non-stop to London and bang on time. Hooray! Even if you did make timetabling errors with Winker, you'll, you always know there'll be another wangle along any minute. Bye, creepy. So here are all the pupils discussing together the situation. And Winker says, that was the 1013 express train non-stop to London. An express train is a train that goes faster than the other trains. So usually it doesn't stop at 
so many stops. And this one is a non-stop, so it doesn't stop at all. It goes straight to London from where it started, but we don't know where it started. And it's bang on time. If something's bang on time, it is exactly at the right time. It's not one second late or one second early. It's bang on time. So exactly at 10.13. And this boy says, even if you did make timetabling errors, so even if you did make an error with the timetable of the train, the timetable is the one that says when each train arrives at each station. You, with Winker, you always know there'll be another wangle along any minute. So here, wangle is being used, I think, like the word a trick. So Winker is always playing tricks on people. He's always uh, tricking them, playing jokes on them, having a laugh. So even if there's a problem with the timetable uh, for the trains, there'll always be another trick along any minute. So he's always going to play a joke. And the other kid is saying, bye, creepy, bye to Mr. Creep. So that is the end of our comic strip, Winker Watson. I will be reading more of these, so let me know what you think. Let me know also in the comments if you understood everything that I said, if you understood the, the whole comic strip, or if you have any questions. A question for you is... Mm -hmm. Okay, when Mr. Creep is running to the bag of candy or the bag of sweets, what causes him to fall over? And you can pause this video and answer the question. The roller skate on the floor causes him to fall over. He walks on top of the roller skate and he falls over. He goes flying through the window. Another little question for you. In this, in this picture, Why does Winker Watson say to Mr. Creep that he can't possibly answer the question? He says to Mr. Creep he can't possibly answer the question because he needs to know if it's a good rail service or not and if there are any delays. Okay, so that's it. Thanks very much and I'll see you again soon. Bye.